if you have ever done marketing mix modeling at some point, you probably got stuck upon something like this. And you might have thought, okay, but what can I take away from this? What type of action can I actually take in order to maximize my ROI and improve my marketing mix? Well, if that's the case, I highly suggest you to stay with me until the end of the video. I'm Christian, co-founder and CTO at Cassandra, and I'm super excited to record this video and to share with you the latest UX improvement that we are going to release in Cassandra. So first of all, real quick, once you train your model, you save your model, uh, you're going to see all of the outputs in the model's overview section. In my case, I'm going to watch at the uh, refresh to model, which was done over four weeks of data. And the very first thing that we see is a quick overview of the model performances. So we see its accuracy, which is great, uh, nearly 98%. And the average error and business error, which again, super uh, good metrics in this case. Then the, the very cool part comes right below. In Cassandra, what we can do is we can connect and integrate with all of your marketing platforms and fetch the data at a weekly level directly from them. And this allows us to actually uh, show you a comparison between the real CPO measured by Cassandra and the platform CPO. In this case, you see uh, three bars for each one because we show, we show you a comparison between current CPO, so the one that we have just measured with this uh, last four weeks of data, the previous one, so the previous four weeks of data, how these this, this, this channels perform, and then the platform CPO. So what is the CPO that was measured by each and every one of these platforms like Facebook, Google, TikTok, and Quido, and so forth and so on. And you can see a few things right away, like the fact that Facebook upper funnel platform CPO is way higher than what we have measured in Cassandra, uh, which is pretty common when you're working with upper funnel activities, which are tough to measure through cookies. And on the other hand, Google search brand seems to be performing super great with the lowest CPO uh, uh, of all, but in reality, it's actually having an incremental CPO, which, which is much, much higher. But the very cool thing is that you don't have to guess any of this by yourself, because by simply looking at the side of these plots, you'll see a bunch of suggestions already generated by Cassandra for you. And the first one is that TikTok, which is currently off, uh, despite its great performances. And the suggestion is to try and turn it on with a weekly budget of 3,400 euros. And we see here, in fact, that the actual previous CPO was 20, which is the lowest of all of them, but actually there is no current CPO. So if we move uh, a little below, we can see that the actual spend is actually zero. But see the other suggestion, then we can move on to the next set. Uh, so the other one is that Google Performance Max is currently overspending. And the suggestion is to reduce the weekly budget to 14,000 uh, in order to avoid bu budget waste. So if you want to uh, take a more in-depth look, you can indeed look at the uh, next session, which shows you exactly the percentage of orders attributed to each and every uh, marketing activity and each and every channel, as well as the exact values uh, of orders and spend for these channels. And you can see, for instance, that Facebook upper funnel with a lower spend compared to performance is actually generating more response. So uh, another suggestion, again, which we don't have to guess by ourselves, is to uh, generate the fact that Facebook upper funnel has the opportunity to generate even more orders without increasing the CPO. And the suggestion is to try and increase the budget to 15,000. On the other hand, Criteo is not bringing an incremental value and we should try and turn it off, starting by reducing the budget to 1,500 uh, 1, uh, a week. Now, we can see, in fact, here that Criteo, which is currently spending 2,380, is indeed generating zero orders. By the way, quick note, in, this, uh, um, in these models, we can actually include uh, offline activities as well as uh, any kind of activity that might have an impact on your business. You can see here we have discount, we automatically define what is the baseline. So what 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 is the amount of orders that you will generate uh, even if you did not and even if you didn't do any type of uh, marketing activities or organic stuff like emails. So all of this is included as well as seasonality. And this is super cool because at the end of the page you actually have suggestions based on the seasonality we are in. And in my case with this model I was uh, analyzing uh, September. So it's telling me that basically the analyzed period is between September until October. So the next period, which is of course uh, going to be October until November. And you can already see by yourself that this line is going up. So the effect of the seasonality is going to be uh, to become like from a minus 30% uh, over to a, sorry, from a minus 3% over to a 5% uh, or even a 10% increase. 
And the cool thing, again, is that you don't have to guess because on the suggestion side, you will see the next month and until December, actually, we measured on average a 5% monthly increase in sales, thanks to seasonality. So the suggestion is to consider adjusting our marketing strategy based on this monthly trend, which means that if we have the possibility, we should most likely uh, increase the budgets, like the overall budgets a little bit, because we have the chance to convert more people during this time of the year. And eventually, uh, as we will see uh, later, uh, the suggestions would probably be to reduce them during the low seasonality periods of the summer in this case. But this is not all. In Cassandra, there is so much more that you can do. Uh, you can do budget allocation, selecting the budget that you want to spend, customizing the period that you want to forecast, and actually uh, eventually adding constraints on your um, on your variables to get a customized media plan across all of your marketing channels, as well as go more in-depth, channel by channel. Let me put myself over here and see at the uh, effect over time, as well as saturation curves of each channel, uh, the correlation analysis. And finally, if you want to go even more in-depth compared to what we have just seen, you can go into model details and see week by week the decomposition. So how many orders week by week were attributed to and every one of these channels like Google search brand, uh, like Facebook conversions and so forth and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you guys booking a call with us to get started. Have a great day. Bye.